هاي ايفروان انت من وين امم البنيه ستيريو تايب كويشن ذات اي فيل ريلي اشيم تو ترانسليت تو انجلش اور ميدل ايست از فيسينج ان انبريسيدنتد ليفل اوف انتولرنس وير ديفرنت ريليجنز اند اثنيسيتيز هيت ايتش اذر وي ليف ان ذا ايرا وير ونز ريليجيوس بيليفز became the business of everyone. A great level of intolerance has emerged in our society. A false belief that uh, our own values are superior to those of others, and as such, everyone should follow, or otherwise, he should be cursed. We were raised on the idea that Lebanon is the host of the religious minorities in the Middle East, and that the religious diversity is our goal. However, this idea is creating lots of religious conflicts because the leader of our religious sects are the driving events. It all started in 2011, when I came back from Canada, where I did my PhD in food process engineering. In fact, I left to Canada because I ran away from my own roots in a search for spiritual identity and purpose. Why running away? Because in Lebanon, we are too influenced by our social uh, surroundings and we are molded to the expectations of our families, especially the religious ones. Interreligious friction is sparkling regularly, especially recently after the massive uh, Christian Arab re reallocation in Iraq and the Sunni Shi'i ongoing conflict on a story dating back to 1400 years. Back in Lebanon, I got the job that I always wanted. Life was nearly perfect until I realized that I live in a country where the interface is just said in words. And we Lebanese are very good in saying words. Khayye, Habibi, Ibn Ammi. But deep inside, we may not mean those words. So I thought that interfaith should be implemented. It shouldn't be theoretical only. At this uh, point of time, I had fears about my hometown, Baalbek, where fears of ISIS crossing the borders took over the minds of everyone there be it Christians or Muslims. But the Christian minority there was affected in particular. In Baalbek, we consider Christians as the salt of the city. So how can we sit and watch them leaving the town? At this point, I called my friend George, and I told him, we should do something. Let it be the Virgin Mary Square in Baalbek. So some people consider that I'm converting to Christianity. Other people thought that I'm doing it just to get famous. But it wasn't the case. I wanted to say that we have to make a message of real interfaith coexistence and a message to the youth that the interfaith, ta'ayush, should be quantitative and not qualitative. My friends, Michelle and Muhammad, and by the way, George, Muhammad, Michelle, these are real names and they are present here. So they stepped in <laughs> and decided to join the movement. So we made the feasibility studies, 
we uh, create the marketing kit, we got the approvals from the municipality, but the main challenge was the funding. Because we didn't want any politician, any political party to get involved. We wanted simple people like you and me to fund similar projects. So, at first, as Eugene used the quote as well, I quote Randy here, so at first we were uh, ignored, then we were laughed, uh, laughed at, then we were resisted, but finally we won. We were able, we were able to collect $42,000 from donations, $10 to $5,000. More than 500 donors were involved in the project. And this was the project Virgin Mary Square at the entrance of Balvik, where ISIS are a few kilometers away from the city. This was in 2012, and everyone started saying they will come and bombard the square, these guys are crazy, but we did it. After a few months, the project was done, we had a huge opening ceremony and a common prayer was said for the first time in the region between Muslims and the Christians out loud, <laughs> refusing all the religious fanatism and agreeing to live together. And trust me, I'm not here to, as we say in Arabic, to sell words via haki. This is something real. Because now when you go to Balbek, this square is at the entrance of the city. It's a haven of religious tolerance. Muslims and Christians come here and pray on several occasions. This is the Palm Sunday a few weeks ago. For the first time, we had this huge numbers of people celebrating the Palm Sunday in Balbek. People who decided to come back to Balbek after decades of leaving the area. So in other words, we achieved our purpose. We weren't crazy, we were right. People in Balbek want the interfaith activism. Following, and these are pictures from Ramadan, for example, in the same square, we had uh, uh, like the Christmas tree, and facing the square, we had the Ramadan decoration, which didn't happen anywhere else. So following, of course, this project was highlighted in too many uh, newspapers, and we got threatened by people, you know, that didn't like what we did, but eventually we did it. Following this big project, we decided to establish an NGO based in Bekaa, Lebanese Association for Coexistence and Development, Al Jamaiya Lebanania Littaayush Wal Inma. This NGO cherishes religious diversity. It believes in the fact that uh, interfaith cannot exist without economic development. Economic development itself cannot exist without security, and security cannot be there without the sacrifices of the state, uh, uh, army, and police forces. That's why our recent project was this one, in Jdita, at the entrance of Beka, again, few kilometers from ISIS presence. This square represents the flame of freedom surrounding the cedar of our flag. And this flame is protected by the logos of the legitimate security forces in Lebanon. Like the previous project, this one got endorsement of the community and the opening ceremony uh, was heartwarming and everyone was happy about it. So in other words, we showed people there 
that it's not only about religious figures, Virgin Mary, because some people don't believe in religions. But we showed that to survive in a country based on uh, inter-religious coexistence, we need to do actual uh, projects, not shiny statements. Our next project is this park we're working on now in a neighborhood in Balbek, co-resided uh, by Sunnis and Shia. And the aim is to bring the kids and play together in order to uh, teach them on coexistence since early age. Our culture is facing two big lies. The first one is that if you love someone, you have to agree with everything he or she says. The second one, if you don't like this one, you have to disagree with everything he or she says. Both are nonsense because you don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate. So the question is, are you gonna stay silent about what's going around us? Let's start with our family, friends, neighbors, colleagues. Forget about the political and religious darkness surrounding us. Let us take initiatives, like the initiatives we did in our NGO. Let's stop blaming the religious clerks and the corrupted politicians. And instead of getting surprised whenever you know where your compatriots reside, take the initiative. I and my friends decided to light candles instead of cursing the darkness. I hope we all do. Thank you.